Being able to see reinforcing loops is another tool of systems thinking. A reinforcing loop basically shows the relationship between two variables, and as the name suggests, the relationship is one of reinforcement, in that actions related to one variable reinforce what happens with another variable. A very common example to illustrate how reinforcing loops work is to use the example of a savings account. So you have money, and you want to put it into a savings account at a bank. When you put your money into the bank, the bank generally pays you interest. Interest means that you have more money. You can then take this extra money and put it back into the bank where it will earn more interest. You then have more money, which you can reinvest, which earns more interest, and so forth. When the relationship is positive, as this one shows, it is generally called a virtuous cycle. Let's take a look at a workplace example. So let's suppose that you have an employee and you want the employee's productivity to increase. Generally, we might start providing positive feedback for the behaviors that we want to reinforce. This positive feedback leads to greater productivity. Greater productivity gives us more reason to provide feedback. More feedback, again, leads to greater productivity. And we hope that all of this leads to very happy employees. And productive, of course. To go back to our first example, though, we know that seldom do loops like this occur in a vacuum. So generally there are things on the outside of the system that are influencing what's going on inside the system. So for example, we can look at interest rates that would influence the cycle of earning more money by having our money in a savings account. In terms of the employee, we could get to a point where the feedback actually becomes detrimental to productivity, or we could have an outside factor influencing the ability of the employee to be productive. These could be perhaps changes in processes external to the system, or new laws, or changes in technology. Anything that would influence the way the employee does their work. And an interesting example of a reinforcing loop occurs in our own minds. And this is what we tend to refer to as the confirmation bias. So confirmation bias simply means that when we take in information, we generally take in the information or prefer the information that already aligns with our existing views. So for example, we begin with an existing belief. We are then presented with new information. We have to make a choice. Do we like the new information? Does it align with our beliefs? Or does the new information challenge our beliefs? If we have a choice between information that aligns and information that challenges, typically we go with the information that aligns and we reinforce our existing belief or we take that new information as confirmation of our existing belief. We also see reinforcing loops in enabling relationships in which one partner will enable or reinforce the undesired behavior of the other partner. So drawing a reinforcing loop, as we can see, we can use them to describe many, many things in our lives, uh, merely requires us to isolate two variables and figure out how they work together to reinforce one another. 